doing good. First question. Nick uh, mentioned that you, you were dealing with an ankle issue before training camp. Um, how did it happen? How are you feeling now? Uh, I was just driving to the basket and it, like tweaked a little bit. I was out for a little while, but it was just continually progressing throughout the treatments and strengthening things that we've done in the weight room. So it, it was just getting better. Uh, tweaked it a little bit, but it's fine. Was it the same ankle as last year? Oh, no, 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 no. It was my other one. Um, do you feel like it's back to 100%? Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels nice. Uh, I can go. I don't really feel any pain. It feels, it feels good. Do you feel like you're physically where you want to be? Nick was saying that you might be playing a little catch-up because that was sort of ramp-up time that you missed before training camp. Uh, I feel like I was, I'd was be pushing myself when I'm on the floor to try to get back in shape. I feel like I'm doing pretty good out there on the floor. I uh, still got to keep trying to push myself every time I'm out there on the floor, try to get better. Um, just keep trying to work on myself every time I'm on the floor. I feel like I'm, I'm getting there still, but we, I'm, I feel like I'm close. Obviously, coming off a of rookie of the year season, expectations that people have of you this year are really high. How do you deal with that? Is that something that you embrace? Is that pressure? Or is that something you don't even pay attention to? I just go on the floor, try to help us win. Any, any way possible, I try to have that impact on the floor, defensively, offensively. Try to take what's given to me. Just try to play the right way while I'm on the floor. I don't really think about it when I'm on the floor. So I'm just out there playing, trying to do what I can. What are your expectations for yourself this year, like in terms of growth? Is there, do you have individual goals this year or something that you're? Uh, I would say I do have individual goals, but it's not really something I really focus on that much. Uh, I just try to really, really focus on the team things. Uh, just try to be able to push myself on my down the floor to just try to be really be aggressive. Uh, try to take a take it to the next level defensively when I'm out there on the floor. Try to make those impacts on different ways. I feel like that that's just we win and the other things come with it. So I really try to focus on winning. Nick, Nick talked about how you have to kind of when you reach a certain level of alertness and, and locked in on both sides of the ball. That's when you really succeed uh, last season. What have you noticed about yourself when it comes to like the game day routine or whatever it is as you went along last season, the stuff you need to do to really be locked in when the game comes? Say it again. So like Nick was talking about when you're really alert and locked in, that's when you're at your best. And um, I'm wondering if you learned anything about like your game day routine last season or, or anything like that that helps you reach that level of, of alertness. Uh, my game day routine is a really you know, I just wake up, eat. You know, I might play the game a little bit. Um, it's really, I'm just trying to stay calm, keep myself calm really throughout the day. So I, when I'm ready for the game, I'm just out there really locked in, really trying to stay having fun. I feel like that's why I'm at my best when I'm out there having fun, laughing, smiling. That, that helps me be able to be locked in defensively when I'm playing the game with joy. Scotty, what can you say about uh, Pascal, you know, kind of seeing him as year two um, as a leader on this team? What can you see, can say about his growth so far in uh, training camp and preseason? I would say Pascal shows that leadership when we're on the floor uh, by the way he tries to push himself, the way he tries to attack, the way he tries to push himself defensively on the floor. Uh, so you can just, every time you see him step on the floor, you see him mentally locked in, coming in here early, working on his game, trying to work on scratch for every single day. So when he steps on the floor, I feel like that that's like him talking uh, as like Fred's more of a vocal, but he's also on the floor, just like really telling things on the floor. I say, I say Pascal's more of a, when we're playing, uh, it speaks, it speaks loud by his actions. Have you spoken to guys who have been through have one rookie of the year who have been through, you know, how to manage high expectations? Um, after such a successful season? I don't know. I don't think I talked to anybody about that. But, um, no, I don't think so. Scotty, we were just talking about like transition offense and how you guys can be more efficient this year. You came into the league really efficient in, in that regard. You always knew how to make plays in transition at 100% speed. Do you, is there anything you tell to maybe some of the young guys when they pick your brain about that kind of stuff? Especially when it comes to like your first read, like when you get the ball off a defensive rebound and take the ball in transition. Is there any advice you have in that regard? Uh, me, I just try to get the rebounds and try to be aggressive. Uh, I know I can 
be lethal in transition. This team can be really lethal in transition with the the length and athleticism that we have being young. We can be very uh, dominant in transition, I would say. But I say we all really try to be aggressive in transition. I feel like that's an easy way to get our our party started, our the movement started, running. I feel like that's what we can do. Scotty, what made you want to start a YouTube channel and show people that side of you with the, the life of Scotty Barnes series? I feel like I just really want to show my personality. You know, you don't really, you can see it a little bit when I'm on the floor, a little bit with the team when they, with their series with Open Gym, a little bit. Uh, but I just really wanted to be able to have my own thing where my guy Max was just really helping me. Uh, my photographer, he was just helping me be able to show myself. Uh, I just really wanted to be able to get content out to the fans. You know, they love us so much. They're, they want to see anything, anything to do with us. So I just give them that content. Uh, just so they can just watch it, enjoy it, and just more things coming on the way. So it's just really me trying to open up my personality, me trying to explore a different world. Uh, you know, off season was a little bored. You know, so it was, <laughs> it was just trying things. You know, I've been I've been wanting to do things like that, but I was just a little nervous. So I just really wanted to test myself and push myself. Could you ever see yourself doing media like a Draymond Green? Uh, the podcast thing, I don't think I'm really a big podcast guy. You know, I'm with you with the. Twitch, you know, interacting with the chat, you know, making YouTube videos, I'd say that's pretty my, my side of it. You were dancing quite a bit in those videos, and I just saw Precious out here uh, doing his own little jig. So what would you say are the top three dancers on the Toronto Raptors? And if you could rank them, that would be helpful. Uh, I would say, of course, you know, I got the best dance moves, I think. I would say OG number two. Even though he got a little awkward movements with it, but you know, at least he tried. So I give him an A for effort. Number three, I would say Precious. Precious do got some moves. Uh, honorable mention, I would say Chris Boucher. Who else? Yeah, I think that Chris Boucher is an honorable mention. Close, closing in at number three. So, Scotty, what can you expect from the uh, Montreal crowd tomorrow? It's I feel, I feel like it's about to be a great atmosphere. Uh, those fans, you know, I don't know when the last game was in Montreal, but I'm sure they're about to have a great time. It's going to be a blast. I feel like it's going to be a great crowd, good game. So I feel like it's about to be amazing. Can't wait. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be fun.
working. Just keep working. You know I mean, I, I was the opposite for you, man. Where like not being good enough to like oh, it's not that good. It's just gonna be fast. It's kind of the opposite. For me. Ha, ha, ha. 
when does that start? Does that start doing more, or does that start closing? Because if you as a leader are talking to these guys three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. But again, I'm, I'm a player. You know what I mean? And, and I have a leader tag on and captain, whatever you want to call it. But again, I'm, I'm a player. I'm out there with the guys. And uh, I'm going to be supportive and help everybody reach their individual goals. But again, I think winning should always be first. And you know, we work our way backwards from there. But um, you know, I'm not really in the business of telling guys what shots they can and can't take. I think that's you know, a little bit above me. And uh, I think that more than anything, as long as it doesn't hurt our team, you know, I'm, I'm rolling with my guys and I support them as, as much as possible. But, uh, it's definitely a, you know, that's a working process for sure. How do you see points to adapt to the team? Watch up. Yeah, how, I just think uh, it's great basketball IQ, knows how to play, he's played on winning teams, um, can really you know, uh, stretch the floor, and obviously shoot three, he's a great cutter, good defender, he's got size, so um, I think just having a valuable piece like that, like we got a lot of talent and we got, you know, we're strong in certain areas, but we need those filler guys. And, Wancho is a great role player and a great guy that can help help and make my job easier, make Pascal's job easier, make all of our guys' jobs easier. Him, that Otto, I think those are the glue guys that you need to, to go far in the playoffs. If I had to say one thing, it would just be like reps. You know what I mean, just practice. You know, there's certain things that you can simulate, certain things you can. I think you need live reps in the game. Uh, I think you've seen my development as a shooter over the years. Uh, some of it is just balance and body and core and strength and things that you can do to you know, work on your body. And then the rest is just getting in the gym and putting the hours in, and practicing game speed shots and different off balance shots and things, looks that you get. Live action, and then you know you gotta have the freedom or the, the uh, conscious or no conscious to go try them in the game and, and live with the results. And, um, I'm certainly got some lucky misses, bad shooting nights, and performances over the years, but um, I continue to, to get better at the shooting. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think, you know, last year was our first year really playing together, so I think we can see where we had success and where we did and the areas that were, you know, strong for us. I think we try to, you know, use those more often and the other areas maybe we, we try something else. So I think that's definitely the key is finding just catch and shoot opportunities and uh, finding different movements to even just, you know, attract the you know, gravity of the defense to get somebody's layup, things like that. So I'll leave it up to Nick to control the offense. I think that there's a, a lot of ways that we can use you know, all that we have. Alright, that's great. Right, thank you. Thanks, uh, okay, let's, I'll start today. Let's start off with Chris Boucher is um, uh, not making the trip. Now he's a um, non-COVID illness, which is not him out for his practice being in the building the last couple of days. So just we get that out there first and foremost. How is it? It's not a I mean, he's okay. I think I think the test comes tomorrow. I mean, you know, it's always hard to kind of judge what's what's going on in practice. I think he's put in a good couple days of work, and we've today was a little bit lighter. Yesterday we went at it pretty hard. Uh, uh, but we look good in the mix on a lot of things. More, more aggressive and things like that. So, but we'll see. Fred is just talking about the performance of the next minute. After the first year, are expecting a lot of the squad to go through. As we were talking about the young players, it takes time. Do you have to manage the whole expectations in terms of what his season is going to be? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, again, I think that. Um, Kind of keep harping on the same things. You got to play as hard and have really energy and uh, enthusiasm that he has, and it just fine. That is what I'm going to be looking at and managing. 
that's what I talk to him about. And again, I think, and I think especially, especially with our team, I think that the 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 way it's you know falling out on the stat sheet or whatever is going to change probably fairly dramatically each night. And understanding that again, you can have a really good performance, and some night that's going to mean 18 points, and some nights that's going to mean eight points. Right? That still can be a really good performance all around. And that's, you know, that's kind of the um, balancing act to keep going throughout, you know, the course of 82. It's a long season. You told us this time last year, but we're in minutes later in the season. How do you start to get the tournament back in the road? Whether it was a success or a year or you know, something like that, this year, just after this guy, just something to sort of show us when he's taking that next step. I mean, I would stay similar to that. I know it's nothing, nothing new and exciting, right? But I would say still that if his minutes are, are up there, he's going to continue to improve, and that's that's the main thing. If his minutes are up, it means he's healthy. If his minutes are up, it means he's in shape. If his minutes are up, it means he's impacting the game. And I, not, I think maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a little more lenient last year as far as just getting him minutes was was a high priority. Now he's got to be impacting. The game. You guys were already a pretty good Galatari on offense last year in terms of who got the opportunity. Uh, do you like to see that go further in that direction? Like an 82 game that got more to get? Or the plays? Well, I, I think, Eric, first of all, I really don't know what place it's in, right? Yeah. So the game started. I think that is always a way of how the team shapes itself each year. And I always say the offense always shapes itself differently with every team and every season. Right, even the things we're running now won't be the things we're running in January. It's just like, just how it goes. Even the the uh, tremendous amount of summer meetings you have about planning what you're going to add when and how it's going to all filter in seem to seem to not take that much fruition. To be honest, I mean it is. I mean we'll be running stuff that probably we've never even thought of before, right? And calling things different things and all that kind of stuff that happens every season. So. But to get back to your question, I mean, listen, I think there's some guys that are that are hoping to, to get more opportunity than to score more on this team. Well, what does that mean? Are we going to be able to increase our our, our volume of scoring? Does that mean our total overall is going to go up? I mean, that would be the first goal. Can we get more possessions? Can we can we you know keep certain guys uh, where they're at or bump them up a little and bring other guys along too? Um, instead of doing kind of the addition subtraction, yeah. and, right? So I don't know the answer to that, but it is something that, that, that um, it's a very good question. It's something to ponder and think about, something yeah. to keep an eye on, for sure. But for a top usage guy, Pascal isn't like a high usage guy, right? So that, I'm just wondering if there's if if there actually is a reason to be more on Galatari and if it just has to come, like you say, by yeah, no, I, well, yeah, no, I think it. I think there is room, you know, for that. But again, I don't want to. Uh, I think you know, Pascal is our, our best scorer, yeah. right? And he has to be given opportunities and sets and space and all the things that he he's, uh, uh, needs to be be that guy, right? And for us to help him as well, right? I mean, he could take his, his up a little bit. Too, I don't think. I think uh, without a whole lot of like over. Yeah. Right. Have you seen anything from Scotty that would suggest he's either overreacting to expectations or does he, get, does he read those things or care about those things at all? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that, um, again, he'll, he'll uh, beginning to start, you know, until, until next week, I think, is when he's going to have to answer, is, is he playing well or is he not, right? Uh, I think this has all been a pretty gradual feeling out. Again, I said he was held out every day for three weeks leading into the training camp day one. That's, that's not, I mean, that's a time when most guys are really getting ready to go, right? Most the last three weeks heading into camp. So, you know, he's got, he's got, some, he's got some conditioning and some rust and things to, to work through. I think he thinks he's on pace to do that by next week. But I mean, on top of that, like the efficiency and transition, how much room for improvement is there from last season, and how much of a bellwether of success is that going to be this season? Well, um, first of all, I think that we, we have to run, right? I think we have to run for a couple reasons. One is we're asking them to play all this defense, 
right? And that has to turn into something productive, right? I mean, you have to take advantage when you're jarring the ball loose and you're creating advantages. You've got to, you've got to get those into into points on the scoreboard, right? And I just think in general, um, if we're going to use some some of this depth, then we should be able to play at a faster rate as well, right? Um, so that's that's that. I, and again, when we're out there and the advantages making them is, I think it's not only good, not only important for like the scoreboard, it's just important for like uh, old-fashioned term team spirit, right? You make a great defensive play, you got a huge advantage. You need to like finish it off, and you're like, yeah, man. You know, then you go back in your garden again instead of like, oh, man, we just blew a golden opportunity, and all of a sudden there's, you know, like like it can change momentum and spirit of things. So. They really go hand in hand, and they're 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 bigger than just that missed opportunity kind of an isolation. I think sometimes. I feel like it's, it's a bit. A lot of it is just reps for young players in terms of scoring and full speed and transition. Because it feels like a lot of veterans teams sometimes have like the best efficiency. In yes, I think that um, the main thing is making a good first quick decision. Right, so the ball comes out and you grab it, and are you thinking score, or are you thinking passes, or somebody ahead of you, like, is it a next bang, bang, throw ahead, or is it you going to draw the defense and then reading with that, you know, whatever, that, and that is what you're talking about. That does take reps, and that takes, you know, we work on that, like, a lot in practice, right, of, of how to score and transition and things like that. And you gotta do it quickly, because if you don't, transition's over with, right? So I think, I think your point about more experienced guys and more reps they've had, like in a lot of things, it's true. Do you have a preference for what guys do, or is it just each situation? It, it's just different depending on who is and who's got it. But again, we're, we're trying to, the biggest thing, the preference uh, is you got to go. Like you got to go or the break's over, right? There's no, there's no like settling to think and look and what's going on. Like you got to go and you got to do your thinking while you're going really fast. And that's why it's difficult. Just two, three weeks, how does he adapt to yeah, I like him. I see him. See him good. I've tried to tried to uh, slow play it a little bit with him as far as having such a long summer and playing. Haven't given him a ton of minutes. I think that um, uh, he's understanding things very well. I think he's a piece that we need with the shooting. I like his cutting, his passing, um, and we're learning. You know, he's really good uh, team defender. We got we're learning. You know how we can use him on the ball as well. So. Pretty happy with him. I would imagine he's gonna, he's gonna, especially early in the season, find his way into to a rotation. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Side, yeah, side, the auto and press are fully go or are there being kind of a to sort of throw. Yeah, I would, I would say for you know that certainly helps, Eric. But I would also say that I'm planning on trying to find a way into the rotation as well as yeah. as a roster. Nick, what do you expect from the Montreal crowd tomorrow? And are you gonna wear your hat? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna wear my hat there. No. Um, well, obviously, uh, expecting a lot of enthusiasm, right? Um, it's always a, it's always a big deal when we hit any of these cities, and we've been to Montreal before. Got a tremendous reception. Um, feel bad that Chris isn't kind of making this um, great homecoming. You know that he that he could be making that 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 would have been, I think, a big charge in the arena. As it was last time, a little bit. Um, got Kem there still, though. So, uh, you know, again, expecting an enthusiastic crowd, not not a preseason type crowd, that's for sure, and that's what makes it fun. And uh, looking forward to it. Yep. Uh, he's, he's still in the same situation, and it looks like they've uh, said that next week he'll be back to contact. Okay. So after, after this week.